is out in practice right now, or if it's in the spring, or for you, if it's in the summer, or maybe early August, whenever that time is for you, where, hey, we're starting to actually put in our offense. This is what this is meant for, okay? Uh, now, we carry it into in-season, and you'll see that. I've got a whole week of in-season practices I'm going to go through uh, today, uh, but a lot of this will get shrunk up because you know when you're in season, you kind of have to lose some of that individual time uh, because you're going to have to really work the situation of the game. So you, you know, it's a little different as you kind of structure it. So think about the way you practice from the beginning of the year and then into season. There's basically, in my opinion, about three different segments of practice. You have the we're installing segment. You have the preseason segment. That's the heavy part. It used to be two-a-days kind of segment. We don't have any games we're really worried about getting ready for. We're just really trying to get revved up for the season. And then you have the end season segment. That's kind of where we're now. We have a game on Friday. We had a game last Friday. <clears throat> That's going to change things up a little bit. Okay, so just kind of understand it will vary. And I've got multiple looks at practice schedules today. All right. So for us, the goal is to have some kind of objective, and that's mainly for your time during individual and during pod. When we get into team and group, we don't, you know, we don't really do that unless we're doing an, an install. So like if we were doing an install day one, we would have a, an objective, hey, we're going to focus on, let's say it's Buck. Okay, and I, and I let guys pick what they want. We usually start with Buck because it's kind of the bread and butter of what we want to do, and it teaches a lot of the same skills. So day one, if we're doing an install on Buck, then yeah, we are going to run that all the way through from individual to pod to group to team all the way through. In the season, so in season, Mondays might be our Buck objective during individual and pod time. And then we get to group and team. Now we're much more game plan oriented. Okay, So it does change a little bit. Uh, as far as where we're cutting things off, but we always try to have that kind of objective of skills we're working because, again, we're series-based, okay? Uh, practice should always build up. Now, I would make a quick adjustment here on this one on number two. Uh, if you are putting in a concept, so you might be in that boat right now, we want to start big and then go small and then go big. So we may do a five-minute period before individual walking the kids through what we're putting in. So put them out there, walk them through. It may say it's Buck's fleet, but I'm just going to use that for an example. But whatever it is, we'll just say Buck. Put them out there, walk them through Buck, explain where the whole team hears, and then go into individual pod and kind of work from there. That way they have the picture of what they're trying to accomplish inside of individual. In season, obviously, hopefully you have it in. So in season, you can skip that part and just jump right into individual. But it should build up. Okay, so what that means to me is it should build up in speed and intensity. Okay, uh, we don't do just a ton of physical hitting each other during our individual. We really don't do it in many periods, um, especially as we're in season. But this is more, yeah, you know, we're going to go full speed, but we may have time between reps where we talk and correct and fix things. We get to pod work. It's the same deal. We may correct a little bit. We're smaller groupings. As we get into group and into team, we're not really going to stop practice because one kid didn't know what to do. And the way we make that happen is essentially every kid works individual time, every kid works pod time. As we get into group and team, we're now really working with kids that are actually going to play on the field. Uh, now, early in the year during install, you're obviously you're going to have to work with all of them because they all need to kind of know. Uh, but our group and our team time, we want it to be much more situational based. And I'll talk about that at the end of this. So number three, I don't know what your practice structure looks like, but you want to try to find a time or place. For us, we have uh, eighth period. So we have the end of the school day where we have a 45-minute block where usually we use that time to lift weights, to watch film, to talk about practice, try to get all that done in 45 minutes. So usually it's like a 25-minute lift and meeting with the offense, and then they'll switch. Okay, and then we'll do about 10, 15 minutes of film. I've learned that kids don't need much more than that. Coaches need more. Kids probably don't. Uh, and then we'll usually go over our practice structure, what we're going to do, so they kind of know what's happening when we get out there on the field. Okay. Um, 
And then number four, I've hit this a bunch and I've really have become more of a believer in it. And you're going to see our practice structure. Like they've changed just in the last two or three years, really, um, where we don't practice very long. Like we're not out there very long. And what that has forced us to do is a couple things. One, our kids don't dread going to practice now. Like they don't dread two and a half hour practices, three hour practices, two hour practice. They don't dread that. They understand we're going to get out there, get what we need to get done and get off the field. And so they're fresh for the games. They look forward to practice. And it's also forced us as coaches, myself included, to realize what's the most important thing and really focus on that. And if we don't get to this extra stuff, we don't get to it. Or if I have to pull one kid after practice and say, hey, stick around a little bit. We want to kind of tweak some of this stuff where he needs it, then we'll do that. And then number five, I would film as much of your teamwork, all of your team if possible. And then if you have certain things in pod, um, I would put a little caveat there. Don't film something you have zero intention of watching or the kids have zero intention of watching. And that could literally be, you know, pick your phone up and video with your phone and show them instantly. You want to yell at a kid all day, that's fine. Video him and show him what he's doing wrong and you'll correct the problem. And I just, that's the way kids learn now. Film them doing it, show them, and now you don't have to scream at them because they'll see, oh, I really am messing it up. And they'll correct it on their own. And that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish anyway. You know, all right, so this is a kind of an, a general practice structure. Um, so you can see on this, 